Hey guys, good to see you here again. Kyle with Ultra Precision Technologies. Uh, today will be the third vlog on the channel. I was hoping for this video to actually be like a product overview type video, but uh, it's been a couple weeks since I put my last video out and I'm not quite ready to do the product overview. So I thought I would just upload a quick vlog talking about what I'm working on in the meantime. So I'm not sure how much you guys follow the crypto market prices, but they have been falling uh, over the past uh, one to two months, uh, kind of a slow, steady decline. Obviously, a lot of the products I make right now are cryptocurrency mining focused because these are products that I made for myself originally. After I made these products and they were working well for me, I figured, well, there's probably other people in the world that would benefit from having these products. And not everyone can just uh, you know do 3D design and not everyone has the space or capability to do 3D printing and all that. So I started my Etsy store at the beginning of 2021. The link for that will be in the description below. But that's not the focus of today's video. I will be coming out with a dedicated video talking about some of my newer products that I'm really excited about sometime in the near future once they're ready and tested and working. Today I just wanted to show you guys that I am selling some of my old Polaris cards that have been mining since 2016. These cards were purchased, brand new, sent into mining rigs, and they have been mining non-stop for over five years. And uh, I think I have 25 of these Polaris cards in my farm and uh, I think it's time to start cycling them out with the prices dropping and stuff um, Efficiency is going to be the name of the game So by cycling out my older less power efficient cards and getting into some newer generation cards in their place It basically just puts me in a better spot to be able to mine longer if the prices continue to fall And don't get me wrong. They're still great cards. They're still very profitable today It's just I'm not betting on them going uh, forward in the future and I just want to slowly start cycling them out and just as another quick note guys if you're wondering what these cards are sitting over here these ones are all cards that uh, have died either from mining or gaming because this is a uh, this is a GTX 780 Ti and uh, obviously I was never mining on that one this one was hit by lightning and these other ones just all have corrupted memory or they're just unstable or they just won't mine anymore for some reason. And these are the cards that I'll be cycling out. So the guy who's coming to pick up the six players cards I sold also requested a universal power meter that we make in red. So I'm going to just go ahead and throw this together with, for him quickly using the power of movie magic and there we go guys all assembled let's plug it into the 3090 rig here and we'll make sure it's all good and there we go guys getting about 297 uh, watts in the miner and the software and total system is showing 375 ish watts So I'm just gonna let this run for a little bit. His power meter is good to go. Looks like it's functioning properly. Uh, I'm gonna go pull his cards out from downstairs. So here we are, six cards. Hey guys, these cards, uh, just gave them a really quick duster with the data vac, blew them all out. So they're uh, not too bad. And uh, six of them in here ready to go. Served me well over the years. Time to get something a little more efficient if possible. So the buyer will be here shortly for these. And, uh, ooh, I gotta get his other stuff. He also wanted two of our motherboard standoff kits, so those are ready to go. And his power meter, which I'm just gonna leave hooked up for now, so I can show him how it works. Okay guys, the buyer just came. He took his power meter, took his motherboard standoff kits, and he also took 180 of my mega hash and about 700 watts out of my farm. So, now I feel like I have this this hole in my heart that needs to be filled because like uh, I can't I can't be losing mega hash that just it just feels weird let's see what we can find so fast forward a few hours it's about 6 p.m. 
I have about an hour and a half trip one way to go pick up something that will fill the void in my hash rate heart and uh, then about an hour and a half trip back and then I will show you guys what it is that uh, I found. Okay guys, three hours round trip, we're back. And this is what's gonna fill the hole in my hash rate heart. And yes, it's already open because I had to look at it in the car. So this bad boy is going to get about 160 mega hash at 200, 205 watts, somewhere around there. 160 mega hash at 205 watts. The six Polaris cards I just sold were about 180 mega hash at about 700 watts. So I'm getting about 9% less hash rate and 64%, I think. I did the math earlier, I can't remember. 64% less power draw. Okay, okay, I'll take it. Now these things don't have fans on them, so cooling it should be a bit of a puzzle. But once I figure that out, you better believe that there will be a product on my store for cooling these CMP cards, some sort of bracket to mount a fan or something. So let's go find this guy a new home so I can put this guy on here and play with it. Let's give that a second to cool down. I guess for now this guy can just go in one of these rigs. Maybe I'll try putting it over here by itself. Yeah, could live in there for a little bit. Maybe a screw to hold it in, because I kind of like this card and I don't want anything bad to happen to it. The first thing we have to do is swap out this uh, Thermaltake Smart Pro 750 watt power supply because uh, it only has one CPU power connector and the card actually uses CPU 8 pin. So I have this HX850 and I'm hoping I can just use the CPU power pin to power the board. And then I found this bundle of cables. So there's a CPU connector here. Take one of these PCI cables out and that should get us working. I have a power supply tester. I'll check it quick before I plug it into the new card. Never mind, these are all PCI E power, so that does not help us. So let's see what else I have. Okay, so I found this custom white sleeved CPU cable. So we're gonna try to plug it in here and check it. We have the CPU 8 pin plugged in, 24 pin. We'll turn it on. And I believe it's good. No time to swap this out using movie magic. Voila. So as you can see, got the CPU, and that's weird, this connector doesn't want to latch in all the way, I don't know. But it's fully seated, it's making good connection. Got this RGB remote to prop the back of the card. And I guess I need to figure out some sort of temporary cooling for this. And I realize this is going to be nowhere near enough cooling, but as long as I can get a little bit of air trickling through, uh, maybe I can just install the drivers and just try to get it to show up in Windows. And we are using the onboard video because this card obviously has no display outs. I can definitely feel a little bit of air coming through here, so I feel a little bit better about that. Now, uh, we're just downloading the drivers here. This is from Vipira Tech, and also Linus Tech Tips did a video on this card, and they actually made a 3D printable fan duct. Um, so I'm going to download this and print it just in the meantime. I do plan on doing a custom cooling solution for this that should be a lot more efficient than this. Um, but for now, this will get me rolling. 
I also find it funny that that Linus Tech Tips video was out for a month now and it only has eight downloads on their duct. And this is how the duct looks. There is a big overhang here, so it's gonna need some support, uh, but I'll get this printing. It's gonna take six hours, so it'll be done tomorrow. And uh, at least I'll have a way to mount a fan to it for somewhat temporary measures until I can design something. So I just fired it up here with basically no cooling and uh, already hit 75 degrees on the uh, C uh, GPU and rising. Barely any hot air coming out of here. Um, but uh, yeah, 153 mega hash at 201. Uh, we're up to 80 now, so definitely gonna need to get some more cooling on this thing. And it doesn't show any signs of slowing down. So I think that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I need that 3D printed fan duct to come out before I can really even do anything else with it. Um, I have these fans, these are 3000 RPM. They're somewhere halfway between Delta and like a high performance fan. Um, I would use a Noctua PPC Industrial 3000 RPM, but those are just not available and they haven't been for months. I contacted Noctua about a month ago and asked them, you know, what was going on with the supply with the 120 mil PPCs, 3000 RPM, and they just said, supply shortages, sorry, we don't know. Which is weird because they have 2000 RPM ones but not 3,000. I don't know what the part that would be in shortage that would not let the fan spin an extra 1,000 RPM, but uh, we'll try these uh, in the meantime. We'll try one of these first, and then I have a funny feeling because how much the air is gonna have to drop down to get through the card. It's gonna be a lot of blowback through the fan, so kind of thinking about doing two fans uh, in series like this to try to help counteract the blowback, but we'll see how that goes, and I'm sure I'll have a separate video on that. So that's all for this one, guys. I need this fan duct to finish printing before I can do anything else. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please press the subscribe button. Uh, my next vlog will definitely be this thing running full tilt with some sort of cooling solution on it. Uh, I also have product review videos coming out shortly for a, a universal power meter and a wall-mounted power meter for like PDUs, uh, as well as a product showcase for my 2022 refresh of my like most popular selling uh, mining brackets. That's all for this one, guys. I will catch you in the next video.